Okay, well, welcome everybody. This is the um, September uh, training class for the, Trans the Transmart Foundation. Um, we have training uh, that we offer uh, each month on the last Monday of the month. Uh, and this year the training uh, includes uh, training for beginners, uh, as well as some advanced topics, uh, data loading, uh, and uh, some data science uh, discussions. Uh, the, the classes are uh, offered, uh, contributed by uh, foundation members, Thompson Reuters, Rancho Bioscience, and The Hive. And today we have Natalia Bukharov from Thompson Reuters, who will be presenting uh, a class on the uh, on introducing um, Transmart, found, the Transmart application um, for you. <clears throat> the session will be recorded, and the recording will be made available uh, in um, hopefully by the end of the day or tomorrow. Uh, so that you'll be able to review it uh, if you like. And so um, today's session is the uh, September uh, meeting, and um, we'll be talking about Transmart for beginners. <clears throat> I would like to start quickly with a couple of two short polls. Uh, this helps us uh, know who's on the line and what um, what your background is. And so the first one you should see uh, is um, have you used the Transmart platform before? And you should be able to click that, hopefully, and we'll see the results. And so today we have about 50-50. Uh, Half of you have used Transmart before, and half of you have not. Can you give me? Can you give us some idea of how you will use the platform? Uh, are you working at a company and doing uh, your research using the platform? Uh, are you supporting other users in your company or organization? Uh, are you using it for academic research or possibly are you a vendor? Um, and so we've got, um, well, those three categories are split even, uh, one third each. So um, there are a few of you doing research directly, a few of you in uh, academic research, and then a few are supporting uh, people in your, in your organization, super. Okay, well, um, let's get started. We will, um, as I said, the uh, the class will run probably about 60 minutes, and um, Natalia will take us through uh, an introduction to the Transmart platform, give you uh, some view about how you use it and the types of things you can do with it. Um, the session is being recorded, and the recording will be made available uh, shortly after the class. Uh, I will stay on the line and uh, watch for questions. Uh, so if you have a question, you have a dashboard over uh, is in your control panel for the GoToWebinar, uh, and you can raise your hand or you can submit a question by typing it. Uh, I will try to um, keep keep an eye on these, and as, they, uh, as the questions come up, we'll try to answer it uh, as best we can. Uh, and I'll, or else maybe I'll fit it in to the best time um, as we as we go through. And then at the end, there'll be time for uh, more more questions and discussions. So with that, um, Natalia, if you're ready, we will uh, we'll get started. And you should have control. All right. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, it looks fine to me. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, the training will be a training for beginners. So we're going to go through the Transmart basics. The objective of today's training is to give you a Transmart overview, go through Transmart browse interface, Transmart analyze interface, and look at all the different functionalities that are included in Transmart uh, search, uh, create program studies, attach, download flat files in the browse interface, uh, data in the analyze interface, subset selection, summary statistics, analytics, gene signature, data download, admin functions, and maybe loading data. Uh, as Rudy has mentioned, uh, there are a number of different trainings uh, that you can sign up for. 
this is an overview, so we're not going to go deep into analytics. We're just going to review the different analytics that are available, and you can join an advanced training later on to uh, look, to go through some case studies and uh, go more deeply. So, Transmart Foundation has wealth of information for users, for, be, for those who just starting to use Transmart and for those who have been using Transmart for a while. So I'm encouraging all of you to explore Transmart Foundation website and Transmart uh, Wiki. On the Transmart Foundation you can find the history about Transmart, uh, so I didn't really want to repeat it on my slides, but um, basically Transmart is a translational data platform, translational data management platform that has been developed by Johnson & Johnson and, Re and Recombinant, and then it became an open source platform, and Transmart Foundation has been uh, established in 2013 and it has been governing the development of this platform ever since. Um, there are a few um, versions of uh, Transmart platform that came out. There was 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. 1.2 also had several releases. Uh, the current release is 1.2.5, which is now called 16.1. Uh, so the decision was made to start uh, naming releases based on the year 16.1, the next one at the end of the year will be 16.2, the next year it will be 17.1, and so on. Uh, so um, well, the Transmart 1.2 version and the current version is 1.2.5. Uh, there is a really good presentation that you can find on Transmart Wiki, and it's very comprehensive. So you can download it and you can um, take a look at this presentation. In my training, I will mostly do um, demo and I would also encourage you to follow along if you would like to and hopefully if you don't crash uh, the server you can uh, log in uh, you can look in the Transmart Foundation uh, wiki as well and it also has use cases uh, curation and loading data training and tutorials information and it also has information about public instances, the current public instance that I'm going to use is the 16.1 or as it was formerly known as 12.2.5 and there is a login information for this instance. Another public instance is eTrick instance. Okay. Uh, please interrupt me at any time if you have questions. So we're going to start with our demo. When you log in into Transmart, uh, the first thing you see is the Browse tab. So the Browse tab is a landing page for the Transmart platform. On the left you, you see Program Explorer, and on the bottom here you, you see Admin Tools. Admin Tools is only uh, accessible if you logged in as an admin. And here on the top menu you see different uh, other tabs and you also see admin tab as well and this tab is available also only if you logged in as an admin user. So the purpose of the browse tab is to uh, browse the studies. 
this that is in the program explorer that you see these folders contain a metadata about different studies it's not the data itself not the data for analysis but it's metadata for each study here I have selected Atma Chui study and you can see the metadata uh, that has been included that has been created by the admin so the admin can create uh, programs, studies, add new analysis and new assays so that's the metadata for the study so browse is um, the first function for the browse tab another, another function is search so on the top here you see uh, a search box and in the search box you can enter a term to search for a study I would like to find studies where ERBB2 has been studied so I'm um, typing ERBB2 in the um, search box and I'm clicking enter and my search term appears in the active filter box and the studies that contain uh, this um, search term are selected in the program explorer so here you see that um, this study includes two more type which is ERBB2 positive and here's one more study that also includes ERBB2 over expressing two more type you can also select several terms um, for example I want to look for uh, lung cancer by default the two terms will be combined with an O option so you will get in your program explorer you will get all of the studies that include either or of the two terms you can combine them with add and then you can only get the study that has both of the terms in this case uh, we got this breast cancer study and the reason we got this uh, this breast cancer because it has the LAN and cancer both terms included in the description and this study uh, looks at the LAN metastasis another search um, option is filters in the filters you can select additional uh, options to limit uh, the studies so here you have program therapeutic domain description I will select cancer and other neoplasms and then this will select the breast neoplasms malignant and unspecified um, program so I have created this program yesterday and here's a description from the program but I have not added any studies if I wanted to add studies I would um, click on the add new study and uh, the information um, window appears here and then I will have to fill it out and the study will be added to this program there are other filters are also available if you want to look at all of the studies for phase 2 clinical trials you can select on the phase and here we have um, this study with a study phase 2 
in this associated tags for this study, there are several fields that connect this study to the information. So the study link will connect you to the GEO website that may or may not work right now. Yes. Um, and CBI is having some maintenance, as I have learned, today from 9 a.m. to 12. Okay, it has connected. So this is one link. Then another link is a study PubMed ID that will con connect you to the publication eventually. And then um, there is a direct link to the publication that connects you to the journal. PubMed ID connects you to the PubMed and uh, the publication links collect, connects you to the journal. Once you um, selected the study and that you want to analyze, uh, there is a button here that you can also click and that will open this study in the Analyze tab. Additional um, functionality of the Browse tab is um, storage for the flat files. So in addition to this metadata that you can enter for each study, you can also attach files. And here we have one study with a, with a file attached. So in order to attach the file, uh, you need to create a folder. You need to add a folder to your study and then into this folder you can add a file. Here you can see test file 5553. To add a file into the folder you click on the upload file and you can drag and drop a file here or you can just click and then you can simply Search on your computer for a file you want to attach to the study. And I will just select this file here with my gene list. And you click open. And it is attached here. To download this file, all, to download all of these files, you can click on export all or you can just download one of these files, then you can click on Add to Export, and you will see that it has been added to the card. And your card is on the left, on the, right, on the top left side here. You click on the Export card, and you can see your file here. You click on the Export selected file, Otherwise, I think just, just keep going. <laughs> All right. Um, so we have um, explored the Browse tab of the Transpart user interface. Now we are going to switch to the Analyze tab. Analyze tab the main tab of the space. In this tab you can see all of the studies in the Navigate Terms uh, panel and in the right big window here you see um, this field for subset selection. In this Analyze interface you can also search I have entered ERBB2 in the search 
field here and I found all the studies that have ERBB2 data labels or ERBB2 folders. So in the navigate terms, you have all of your studies. Uh, let's explore some of the public studies that are loaded into this instance of Transmart. In the public studies folders, you have you can see the list of different public studies. If you click on the button uh, on the um, plus sign here, you open the study and you can see the data that has been loaded with the study. So for AFMA here you see that there is data that has been loaded for subjects and because this study is about different cell types, that's all you see here. If you open a different study, let's say COPD, for subjects you can see uh, sex, race, organisms, homo sapiens, what kind of disease they had. And you can also see endpoints, the diagnosis, other diagnosis in addition to COPD, and some measurements. In the biomarker folder, you can find transcriptional profiling data. There are three types of data that can be loaded into Transmart. The categorical data, low dimensional categorical data, uh, they have this ABC in front of them that you can see. Uh, the numerical data is one, two, three. And the high dimensional data, array type of data, they have this uh, kind of a DNA uh, symbol. So the low dimensional and the high dimensional, and the difference between these two data is how um, they are related to subject. With the low dimensional data, you have subject, variable, value. One subject, one variable, one value. If you have multiple uh, values for the same variable, it has to be subject visit variable value. In case of high dimensional data, you have a, a sample. Sample can have multiple um, variables associated with it. If it's an array, expression array, then you have a sample and you have 50,000 variables, meaning uh, probes associated with that sample and then sample is associated with the subject. Uh, Transmart platform has been developed um, on using the I2B2, which is also an open, open platform. And I2B2 uh, can accommodate low dimensional data. And the high dimensional is the development for Transmart. So, Transmart allows to combine uh, the low dimensional and the high dimensional data for analysis in the same platform. Any questions? Let's look at this COPD study in more details. We have data here for um, chronic obstructive disease subjects and control ones. Uh, let's select the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as a subset one and the control subjects as a subset two. Now we can select summary statistics and in the summary statistics tab here we can see the statistics on the both subsets. We can see the histogram of age for both subsets, sex and race. 
we can uh, print this or save it as a PDF by clicking this print button and we can use this in the presentation. If we want to look at any other concepts, uh, variables from this study, we can also drag and drop them into the summary statistic field. Here I have selected force expiratory volume ratio and this is basically uh, the volume that can be exhaled by a subject in one second. So as you would expect, subjects that have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, can exhale a lot less than normal control subjects. On the right here you can see the t-statistics and a, a very significant p-value. Let's go back to our comparison. So we think this is an interesting um, comparison and we would like to save this subset for analysis later on or maybe to share it with our colleagues. To the right from the subset selection you have the save subset button. You can click on the save subset button you can give the name to this subset and then you can make it a public if you want to share it and then you can click on the save subset okay. and the save subset um, will be saved in the workplace and you can go back to this subset later on to do more analysis you can also uh, email this subset, you can create a link to this subset. You can also look at this subset to see what you have selected. If you want to come back later and analyze this subset, you just go to workplace, you select use this subset, and when you select use the subset, you will have this notice uh, that will inform you that this selection will override anything you have in your um, subset selection field. And you can click OK and you have your subset back here and you can do additional analysis. Okay. Okay. We can clear the subset now and we can uh, select a different subset. Let's look at the acute lymphoblastic leukemia study. In this study, we would like to compare um, the B cell precursor type of the leukemia and the common type of the leukemia, uh, but we also want to limit this to a high risk group. So we select the high risk group and we drop it into the next box. Or if you want to exclude the high risk group, we can click exclude and it will be excluded. So here we want to include it. Then we also want to limit the age of the subjects that we will use for the analysis. So we will select age and here we have another pop-up box where we can select show histogram to see uh, the distribution of age in this study. So we have anywhere from one year to 20 years and we want to look at uh, at the children, so we want to look at um, less than 15 years old. 
So we will select um, that we want to limit by numerical. And we have here operator less than, and we select 15. OK. And our subset will be selected, it will be limited to 15. And we can also limit to 15 our subset number 2. And we can click on the summary statistic to see um, the distribution of age, sex, race has not been included in this subset. So the next uh, tab that we're going to look at is this grid view. When you click on the grid view, the two subsets that you just selected, uh, they will be in this grid view. And in the grid view, you can deselect some of the columns. For example, we don't want trial, we don't want race because we don't have it. Okay. The subject ID is an ID that is assigned by Transmar to each subject. Patient is an ID that has been loaded for each subject here. Um, there is no samples, so we can remove that. Okay. And now we can filter it sort it, ascend it, or descend it. And we can also add other data to this grid view. For example, we can add this um, therapy. Our uh, subjects didn't have um, this particular therapy. We can try another one. Okay, two subjects had this therapy. So, and now we can click on export to Excel and download the data for our record or to use it in a different analysis. We can also export the data using Data Export tab. When we click on this Data Export, you will have all of the data that is available for the subjects, for subset 1 and subset 2. So we can select all what we want to download. We have clinical data and we also have microRNA data. And then we can click on the Export data and the data will also be downloaded. We can click on the run in the background if we are downloading a huge study. And then we can come back to our download in the export jobs tab. Here you can see that the download has completed and then we can click on it and we can open it. Let's select a different study, for example, this breast cancer. And look at the data that is available for download here. We have data for 289 subjects, clinical and messenger RNA. We can limit the data that we want to download by uh, dragging and dropping the folder from the left navigate term window. Let's say we only want to download demographics. So we drag and drop the demographics folder into the 
selected cohort clinical and low dimensional biomarker data field and then click on the export data We can put it in the background as well. Okay. Any questions so far? I don't have any queued up. If anybody has anything, you can raise your hand or type it into the question window. No, I don't see anything. Any questions? Okay. Our latest export job is still gathering data, but as soon as it's ready, it will change to the complete here. So far, uh, we have explored our studies in the navigate terms. We have uh, selected subsets. We have run a summary statistics. We have looked at our data in the grid view. We have exported the grid view. Uh, we have exported our data. Okay. Um, let's see what other um, options are available. So in the sub menu here, you can see the advanced workflows. Advanced workflows allows you to run a number of different analyses. And you can see the list of different analyses in this drop down menu. If you select an analysis and click on the question mark, you will get into um, the menu here. Here you can read the description of the box plot with ANOVA analysis. There is also a more detailed uh, manual on the Transmark Foundation Wiki where you can read about all of this analysis, what they do, how to properly run them and how to interpret uh, the results. Another. We do have a question from Amy. Um, is there a field length limitation on the text field? Oh, is there a field for patient? This is Amy. Would you like to let me unmute you? You can ask the question. If you have a mic, Amy, you can ask the question again. Uh, maybe she doesn't have a microphone connected. Okay, for example, a long text field like medication or a comment field. Is there a long free text field? The text field? Um, She's asking, I think, how long can they be? How long they can be? Yeah. Well, um, there is a limitation to how long um, the, the folder names and the variable names can be, uh, but it it's kind of a, depends on how deep is the tree. So this whole um, pass from the tree name to the variable name uh, has to be within 500 characters. So you can include uh, the free text, but it has to be a certain length. So this uh, combined length 
should be less than 500, uh, a variable should be less than 250. So how about the text field itself? Is there a limit to how long, how big the text field itself can be? The actual, in, not, the, not the, in, the variable name, but the actual field. In, in the actual search field? Yeah. Well, the data, the data field itself, how long can the text be in the, like if you have a comment? Oh, if you can have a comment, it, the comment should fit into the into the Transmart database. If it's yep. too long, if it's longer than 250, okay. right. it's not going to fit. Okay. I think that's the answer. Then you will have, yep. yes. 250 maybe. Then you will just have to attach it uh, at the right. file the bra in the browse inter interface. Okay. So we have looked at the comparison, summary statistics, grid view, and we have looked at all the different advanced workflows, data export, export job, workplace, workplace, that's where we have our saved subsets. Okay, the next tab that we're going to look at is the gene signature. Okay. And the gene signature you may want to have a gene signature for some of your analysis workflows. So when you click on the gene signature, you will see all these gene signatures that have been created by different users. And if you want to create your own gene signature, there is a new signature button here on the right. You can click on the new signature and you can give it a name. Let's create a gene signature October 26. And this is going to be our test training gene signature. Then you can click on the metadata here. And there are only two fields that are mandatory. First field is to select species for the genes will be Homo sapiens. And next one is a technology platform that was used to generate this gene signature. And we're just going to select other other because there is no platform here. Then we will click on next. Okay. And here in the next, we have to select p-value. And here we'll select undefined. The gene symbol, that's what we have. Full change. Not used because this is just going to be a gene list. And then we will click on save. Okay. Oh, well, uh, then we have to select the file, I'm sorry. So for the file, you have to have your uh, gene list in the tab delimited format. And here I have my tab delimited gene list um, on my desktop. So I open it and then I click save. And now I have my gene list also on the list of available gene signatures. In this action box, there are several different options. You can clone it, you can delete it, you can edit it, you can download it, you can make it public. Okay, when you click on the gene list here, you can view the genes that are included in this list. And you can also look at the metadata that were entered with this gene list. Any questions about the gene list?
so I don't see anything yet. I think you're okay. 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 So we can um, use our gene list to analyze a study. Okay. Clinical data. So let's look at this breast cancer study and we want to select relapse known and relapse yes, two subsets. And we can click on summary statistics and there is nothing here because this, um, the default summary statistics age, sex and race has not been loaded with this data. In the advanced workflow we can select hierarchical clustering, for example. In the hierarchical clustering, we can use our expression data. We don't want it to run for too long, so we just want 10 rows to be displayed. And here in the high dimensional, there is a high dimensional data selection. So when you click on it, you can limit the genes that will be considered, that will be used in this analysis. You can either start typing the name of the gene, and you will get a list, or you can start typing the name of your gene list and it will also will be a selection here and it's worth very useful because sometimes you have a hypothesis you have a gene list that you think it important list of biomarkers so you want to have it handy to run it through a number of different analysis and you don't really want to select one gene at a time so you have your gene list you have created it in this gene signature list tab now you have selected it in the analysis and you can click run here and your analysis is running take a couple of minutes because it's hierarchical clustering. So while we're waiting, are there any questions? <clears throat> so far I don't see any. You can raise your hand or type a question into the question window. No, don't see any. Okay. So I have my analysis running in this table. It's done. So here you are. You have your hierarchical clustering for the genes here and you can see that your subsets are kind of mixed together so for this particular subsets this particular genes don't really um, separate them so here you can click on this heat map and it will be downloaded and then you can use it um, In your presentations or you can um, examine it in more details you can also click on this download raw data okay. and this is the data download it so you will see results and your heat map so 
So the next tab that we can look at is this utilities tab. So utilities tab have several options here. It's a logout, change my password, and contact contact us and it has help. So it's a pretty straightforward tab. And the next tab is this admin tab. As I have mentioned, this tab is visible if you have logged in as an admin. Okay. So here I want to show one slide before we go into the admin. So Transmart has several different levels of permission and security. So first of all, Transmart instance can be accessible without a login, has, can have an open access, and can have a user-controlled access. So and that is determined uh, by a configuration file that is stored on the instance. Then each user has can have um, different roles, and depending on the role, a user can have different access to uh, the options within the Transmart uh, interface and to studies. So the access can also be limited per study. Some studies can be accessible only by specific users or user group. User can also be a member of a specific group that can have privileges to access specific studies. So all these user privileges and user groups privileges are controlled by the administrator. And here in the admin menu, you can see various options to control the access. So when you, you first open uh, the admin tab, your view is access log li list. And in this access log list, you can see everyone who has logged in and what kind of um, tasks they have done. And this is mostly admin, because that's how I have logged in as admin. Okay, and the tasks that we have done, we have exported the results of our analysis, we have exported data, we have created gene signature. Okay. You can filter uh, this um, log by the user. You can also export this log for your record. On the left panel, you have different options for viewing the user list, creating new user, Viewing the group list, creating group, and controlling the group membership. You can also control access by the group by selecting a group and selecting studies that the group can access. You can also look at the study list, and the study list will show you the private studies that have been loaded into Transmart that can be secured where access can be limited. So in order for study to be securable, first of all, you have to load it with an option um, to be securable. And then it will appear in this um, study list. You can add that securable study to the study list, and then you can secure it. And then there is the role list. So these are the different roles that you can assign to a new user. And you can create a new role with a different privileges. And request map here has kind of URL pattern that determines which 
tasks um, can be um, which studies uh, and operations can be accessed by different users. And you can create a new request map um, by specifying a URL uh, for the resource within the transmart that can be accessed by the user. So uh, the admin functionalities are also described in the uh, manual. You can also um, take a look. And if you um, need admin training, you can also request an admin training and uh, we can include it in the different trainings that are offered through the year. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Yes, we do have another question from Amy. Um, can I search a text field for subsetting criteria? For example, subset one for patients who have biologics in their medical history text field. Um, so you have to name the name, you have to know the name um, of the biologics. Or if they've used the tag biologics in the field, right? They could just search yes. for that. Yeah, you can use, yes, that. So, um, what being indexed are uh, um, actually the names of all of the folders. Yep. So you, you can look for anything um, that you can see here. So you have more options for search in the browse interface. The browse interface will also look in the um, in this free text field, and here you can include whatever information you want to facilitate the search. Yep. <clears throat> okay, good. Anyone have any other questions right now? Can I see other questions? So, yep. Okay, so are, is that, are you done now? Well, we can continue. So um, okay. the training is um, booked for two hours. You, it's 11.15, it's been an hour and 15 minutes. We can stop here, but we can talk about a couple of other Things. So it's up to the audience. I was also wanted to just give a brief overview of the R interface and data loading. Or we can just stop here. Uh, we have um, already looked at all of the main functionalities in the Transmart interface. I think usually we finish at, at this point. Um, if there are any other questions, you know, we can certainly try to answer those for anyone. No, I don't see anything. Okay, well, is any other, any other, you know, small thing you wanted to show, Natalia, we could be, it, uh, I think it was fine. I think it was a good overview. It showed everything that we need. Okay. Yeah. So well, let's see. We have one more question. So Amy would like clarification. Does does she have to pre-process a text field so that she can put it, for example, in the medical history that contains biologic? I guess I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, you can put it as is. It depends on what you have in your so you can put it as is, 
or you can match it to some standard ontology. It's always a good idea to use a standard ontology when you curate and load your data into Transmart, so you can later um, kind of uh, normalize all of the different studies and use standard names for your biologics. And when you search for a standard name, you can find all of the studies with the same biologic. Amy, is that answering your question? Yes, she says yes, that answers it. Super. Okay. okay. Well, um, thank you. Um, hopefully, this was. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, are you going to. Yeah, no, no. Other thing that I wanted to mention is in oh. our interface. So we have um, looked at the user interface for Transmart. And it has some analytics, and if you sign up for advanced training, then you will go through those analytics and case studies. You can do some analysis. But in addition to analytics in Transmart, uh, there are a number of different plugins that have been developed for Transmart uh, by um, commercial analytical uh, software, such as um, Spotfire, and there is also Transmart R interface, which is basically an R package that allows you to connect to the Transmart database, pull out data from the Transmart, and then analyze it with your favorite R package or your favorite R pipeline. So that's um, one more kind of thing for those of you who might be proficient with R. This is a great uh, plugin and a great way to analyze data. Um, I'd also mention that there's a, a Smart R um, plugin that's coming in the new version uh, of Transmart 16.2, which we will be going into beta test in a couple weeks and be released uh, probably in um, late October or early November. Uh, and there are a number of recordings on the website uh, about Smart R, uh, which is uh, an advanced uh, workflow um, tool that lets you build in uh, workflows that use, you know, take advantage of R. Um, so, a number of different options there. Uh, again, the website has a lot of uh, additional tutorials that are recorded and available there, uh, as well as we have a monthly community call. Uh, which is the third Thursday, of, a third Tuesday of each month, uh, where we will usually have a guest speaker talking about some new feature and new capability. Uh, and so, uh, again, I encourage you to explore the website because there are quite a few uh, tools there and, and recordings. Um, these, all these recordings are also on YouTube. You can search YouTube uh, as well. But uh, we've tried to organize them to make them a little easier for you uh, on our website. The last thing I'd like to mention is that we do have our annual meeting coming up in San Diego uh, in a couple of weeks. And so if that's a convenience for you to, uh, to, to come into San Diego, it's October 25th through um, 27th. And uh, it would be, uh, you know, we certainly have a lot of space there that we can, um, you know, we'll be covering uh, a number of the, uh, the kinds of topics that um, I went through today, uh, as well as looking at some of the futures um, of the, um, you know, for Transmart and where things are going, uh, as well as um, uh, having a number of keynote speakers. Uh, I'll, I'll put uh, some of the, the details on the screen here. So it's October 25th to 27th uh, at UCSD in San Diego. Um, we have a uh, six uh, very interesting keynote speakers talking about a whole range of topics uh, that include some uh, advanced analysis techniques that they're developing at UCSD, um, some information on the Elixir project, which is a, a very large data 
sharing project uh, in Europe, um, some of the local work being done at UCSD uh, on um, OpenBell and some other uh, capabilities. Um, Professor Harris from University of Michigan will talk about um, data uh, provenance and, and you know keeping you know keeping track of your your data and um, ontologies and things. And um, Clanthus will talk about the San Diego uh, biotech uh, arena. We also have uh, eight sessions uh, on different topics ranging from scientific applications, open data, integrating clinical data, uh, etc and about 40 speakers um, who will be talking on all these things. So uh, if you're interested, you, know, you can register again on our website. Uh, there's um, plenty of space available still, and um, we'd love to have you join us there. And we will have also uh, another training class during that week, I believe. So anyway, um, thank you again. Hopefully this was an informative for you. Um, tell your colleagues uh, if uh, you have others who might be interested. We have a number of training classes yet to, um, to, to happen this year, uh, and uh, we will continue this program next year as well. Uh, so um, again, thanks for your time. Uh, this recording uh, will be saved and posted on the website uh, in, a, in the next couple of hours, and um, look forward to seeing you at uh, future Transmart events. Thank you.